Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining our live webinar today, Introduction to T-Navigator Geology Designer. It's Ran here from Rockflow Dynamics and I'll shortly be handing you over to my colleague Tom who's going to take us through the webinar today. Um, just to let you know that everybody's line will be on mute today, but if you'd like to ask us any questions, please do so using the chat box on your window and we'll pick all those up at the end and answer them. Okay, I'll hand you over to Tom. Thank you very much again and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Joe. Um, so thanks for everybody for attending so far. Um, we had a lot of sign-ups, which is great. And it's actually uh, an exciting opportunity for me to present our relatively sort of new module, which is the Geology Designer um, uh, module. And really, it's just an introduction uh, to the interface and some of the capabilities that we can do within a geology designer. And so I'm gonna sort of, it's gonna be a fairly a sort of fast paced sort of a presentation and demonstration. Um, but if anyone has any questions um, after um, I've finished, um, please feel free to use the chat box like Johan uh, mentioned, or just contact me directly and I'll give you my email at the end of uh, the webinar. So thank you. So, um, for those who um, have used or even haven't used T Navigator, this is really sort of the first interface uh, somebody um, or a user would would see. And so these are all of the sort of modules that now available or now we have available within T Navigator the platform. But if we look at a sort of schematic uh, car, sort of cartoon uh, approach to this, we actually really began. Um, or it ultimately began with our simulation. And this is, like I said, where it all began. And it's our foundation piece, uh, and it's really the engine of the, of the platform. But with aggressive development, we have completely now branched, uh, branched out, uh, creating a variety of modules uh, to now perform best practice workflows within the industry. So over a period of time, uh, and, a and fairly recently, we have we've had requests from REs, geologists, to enable us to create a, a, a quick uh, models to run in our uh, efficient simulation. So, so um, actually, we have now uh, encompassed um, an all-round solution, um, which basically is formed from a lot of feedback and best practices and which is a real advantage of the platform. And we rely on a lot of feedback and also um, best practices that have come into us where we can then um, share our knowledge um, and, and run real sort of active, um, I guess, knowledge sharing events um, and in continuous development and growing with, within an enthusiastic and development team and ultimately then bridging the gap with, um, and collaborating uh, between either our geological modeling and interpretation with our dynamic simulation as well. So this is really where we all sort of uh, interact with each other. The geology designer now is really sort of now, uh, well, which is really sort of entailing us to become closer to our dynamic modeling where we can bring, where we can bring our geological models uh, or geological interpretation and work closely uh, or creating detailed uh, models to then run in our uh, efficient simulation. Okay. So what is the geology design and what do we have available for, for uh, within, within, the, within the module? So what we have here is a variety of features and, and it really embeds um, uh, processes going from seismic interpretation all the way through to well correlation and uh, model building uh, and through to data analysis uh, and then bringing into uh, into uh, our petrophysical uh, parameters and uh, modeling our fasces and petrophysics. Okay, and, and, and then all in all, once we've sort of developed our modeling, we can then go from the static world and then um, and then and then come straight into the more dynamic uh, simulation side of things. So bringing our geological model and, in our, and interpretation, uh, building uh, ultimately building a geological model at the resolution and the detail that we want to simulate at, and then initiating those properties into our simulation and ultimately running history matching and then adding on uncertainty analysis as well. So what I've done really here is utilized a sort of day-to-day -day, um, workflow that, um, that we as sort of, um, I guess, uh, geologists and geophysicists uh, would encompass uh, when it comes to a, a sort of geology package, right? So really we start here with the data preparation where we would load uh, our data, QC our data, do some seismic reconnaissance, and maybe 
uh, run some uh, some really fast interpretation for well analysis and generating surfaces as well from our wells, whether, whether that's from our well tops or our interpretation. And once we're happy with our with our data preparation, our interpretation, we can then move into the model builds. They're either building a really fast sort of sugar cube model for really uh, for 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 whatever sort of reason that may be, or building more complex structures like structural grid, where we can uh, incorporate uh, more complex faulting, and also uh, on structured grid, where if we want to do if we were wanted to embed so, sort of stair step gridding uh, um, uh, workflows as well. Okay. So once we've built our model, we can then move on to uh, property modeling, where we can we can look at sort of upscaling our, our petrophysical parameters into the model, and then ultimately building fascist modeling and running petrophysical modeling with a variety of um, algorithms that we perhaps want to use, and QC and that information, and then finally running volumetric calculations, um, reporting those volumes out. And then ultimately maybe capturing on the um, various um, parameters for uncertainty analysis and running multiple realizations and more stepping into the dynamic world after that. So how do we really do this in T-Navigator? Okay, so we start off really with seismic reconnaissance or seismic interpretation. So with regards to seismic interpretation, um, we have the ability to bring in uh, 2D, 2D lines or 3D volumes. And we, have, we also have the ability to, uh, to bring in or or, or specify the number of inlines or cross lines and even time slices that you want to use to help your interpretation. We can also use um, polygons, which we can convert to arbitrary seismic lines to help again with our interpretation. And various interactive sliders and color bars, again, perhaps the color bar to enhance features um, that we can't see sort of with our default colors or utilizing an interactive slider bar to uh, to move our inlines and cross lines uh, as we progress through the interpretation. We also have an interactive seismic view or seismic uh, interpretation view where we can initiate our interpretation, whatever sort of uh, uh, amplitude we're trying to interpret on. Um, and also then we have a variety of interpretation methodologies, whether that's a manual interpretation, a guided auto track, 2D seeded auto track, uh, or a 3D auto track once we've sort of created this cross hatch effect. Maybe we want to utilize some parameters um, or consider various parameters, whether that's a peak, whether that's um, our peaks or our troughs, and run a, a 3D auto, auto correlation across our, uh, our amplitude that we're trying to interpret um, and, and essentially sort of making our interpretation a little bit more or that more efficient. Okay. So that's really, in a nutshell, some of our seismic interpretation and capabilities. Um, and if, again, if you've got any more questions regarding the seismic interpretation, just let just let me know, and I can get back to you about those. So, what I'm going to do now is step through some of the other features that we perhaps um, that you perhaps want to uh, want to see. And so, I'm going to start really with um, some data preparation, um, talking about loading. Uh, talking about well correlations, so some simple service creations, and then going into um, uh, a quick look over over structural modeling, and then how we then we can populate that model uh, using some, uh, our petrophysical parameters, um, and then at the end talking about some volumetric calculations and um, how potentially we can do that within T Navigator. Cool. So I'm just going to dive into um, T Navigator uh, as we speak. Okay. So I've just um, opened up T-Navigator, and this is the kind of overview. Once you've opened the, the geology designer module, this is, the, this is the, the view or the visualization you would see. So just in simple terms, what we have here is on the left, we have some functions and what we call a calculations tab, or I call it a hammer tool, some settings, and then also and some various other tabs here that maybe are ob where our objects are stored. Here we have geometry objects, so all of the inputs, uh, all of the all of the objects that we import into the project um, are stored within the geometry objects here, uh, and any other features that we create within our project are also stored here. So this is our wells, our markers, our logs, polygons, seismic data, uh, and even the static model in here. So as we move across the screen, also we can see the various windows that we can have open here. So we can start off with 2D window, 3D windows, seismic windows, cross sections, uh, well tables, or well manager. 
well section windows, histograms, you name it. We have a lot of windows here to help us run uh, our interpretations, um, uh, visualize uh, maybe our horizons or maps that we've created or do any, run any data analysis, whether that's use, understanding uh, data distribution with histograms or looking at cross plots, et cetera. And the other thing I wanted to show you here is also the, uh, the toolbar on the right hand side. And so this obviously changes dependent on which window we choose. OK, so this is a 3D window at the moment that we have um, that, that I have visualized. And so, like, if I were to click on a, on a 2D window, perhaps I've got a I've got a map in this case. You see that the functions or the tools adapt to the dependent on which window I have open. We also have a message bar at the bottom here. So if I perform any processes, whether that's building the model, uh, whether that's running a calculation, um, I get an information sort of message bar here that tells me uh, what, how long the calculation's taken me or if there's any errors or, uh, or uh, any kind of, I guess, any kind of uh, calculations and, and yeah, errors which, uh, which are necessary to bring up if something went uh, wrong, okay? And I can undisplay that if I wish. So just quickly moving on, like I when we're talking about importing data. And so with regards to the geology designer, we have this sort of tab called the hammer tool. Well, I call it the hammer tool and it's a calculations tab, right? And so what we can see here, depending on what ob object I click on, the hammer tool or the calculations tab changes or transforms into, uh, into uh, the, the, the various processes that are available for me to run on per object. So for an example, if for wells, I can import, uh, I can calculate, I can transform various things, uh, I can export. For markers, I can run calculations, I can build markers, I can build, um, uh, I can sort of export and import as well. For logs, again, I can run some more calculations. And so like as I move down the objects, the, uh, the features and the calculations change accordingly. So with regards to uh, well correlation, I've this is a project I've already brought data in. Um, but with regards to uh, bringing so not well correlation, but bringing wells into the project, um, what we can what we can do, and the beauty about this is is the fact that we can use like import here, and we can come in here the calculations tab, and then we can open up um, this section here at the top, which gives us the sort of file format, uh, and we can take in a lot of different formats uh, as you can see here. And then all we need to do is add a row like so, and then go and find the file, click on the file, and then we can QC that file within this data tab here, and we can tell where what we want to be able to read, uh, which column we want to read, which column we don't want to read. And then all we need to do is press apply and okay. So once we've done that, uh, the wells should come in like so i can open up the settings tab so this is the settings tab which allows me to visualize whatever i want to visualize so these are the trajectories uh, I've, I've, i imported in and with that i have various settings here i can move up i can move down um, and some of the annotations i can take off the trajectories i can change the colors of the well path if i wish etc etc so this is more like this settings tab is more how i want to visualize my data within whatever window i'm utilizing so with the moving on to the more uh, bringing more data in uh, for, for markers what i can do is keep this calculations tab open open up markers and click import again find find the relative file again add rows and i can visualize the file in here qc the file and press apply once i've applied here i can then visualize the markers and see uh, just qc it visually or I can take a little step further and utilize this well table tab here, which shows all the wells I have in my project. Um, and I have 23 wells currently. I can open up the, the actual trajectory in this section and, and visualize the trajectory and make any edits if I want to make any edits as well. And then once I brought some well markers in, I can also visualize those well markers as well per, um, per well. So this is kind of like my well manager uh, my well, my well, mal, well, mal, uh, well marker spreadsheet, uh, etc. Uh, and then for logs as well, what we can do if I go back to my 3D window, I can come to the, I can open up this hammer tool again, click on the logs, again come to import, specify what file type, so last format, look at the file, and just to QC the information, press apply, and OK. I can see what logs I'm bringing in, and then 
go ahead and visualize those logs. And these are all the logs I have currently in my project. So for an example, I can click on uh, porosity and have a look here. They are cylindrical in shape. Um, when I visualize them in a 3D window, um, if I go to general, I can change the, as the aspect ratio and the scaling of how I want to visualize this, for an example. Uh, I can also adjust the view in a 3D window accordingly, etc. Okay. So that's sort of, sort of bringing, bringing uh, data in from trajectories to markers to logs. So then for horizons, it, it works exactly the same. So I can come to this hammer tool. Okay, I can click on my horizons here and I can come on to import and I, again, specify the format, find the location, press apply, and then I can bring in uh, my horizon. Okay, so horizon at the moment, I can adjust this view here. <coughs> Just size. And I can start to see uh, some, of the, some of the data I've actually brought in. Good. <clears throat> so just moving on now, what I can do now is actually start to uh, analyze this data. So analyze some, analyze some, of, the, some, of, the, some of the logs I've brought in, so basically start my well correlation if I like, if I, if I want to. And to do that, um, there are various ways I can do that. I can come to a well section window like so, and obviously here, I've already generated a well section window. Uh, and so what you can see here um, in the settings tab, I've, gener I've created a well section um, here where I can toggle on the various wells I want to start my correlation and I can just add on as many wells as I want. And also to build a necessary template, making it all colorful, uh, including fascist logs, including, uh, uh, I guess, uh, annotations if you wish, et cetera, et cetera. And so, uh, basically, what I can do here, um, just from uh, just from starting from scratch, is if I move to a 2D window, and this is just showing um, my horizon which I brought in. Uh, if I want to show some contours on that, and just for visualization purposes, I can come into the settings, jump into the horizons, and move onto the surface and just show some contours like that. And I can open up even more settings like here, and play around with the with the contour lines, make it more dense if I wish, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So to make a correlation, what I can do, a brand new one, is come to my tools tab here, and at the bottom here, okay, so I'm gonna move on here. <laughs> Let me just uh, move on my, my screen. Uh, <clears throat> just gonna reopen this for a second. I'm gonna jump into a new project. Um, because I'm going to open up a project which I already have uh, available uh, in, a, in a window. So what I can do here is in a 2D window, I can open up a surface like so, visualize my wells, and then begin a well correlation if I wish. So here I can name the well correlation, and then I can just click, start to click on a correlation, like so. And once I'm happy, I can close that down and then open up a new well section window, like so. This is gonna take on a previous template I already uh, created, um, but uh, you can see here, uh, I've added a brand new template. Uh, well, I've already created a template in the project, so it's taken up that template and it showcased my gamma logs, my porosity, my permeability, and my fascist logs as well. Okay. So talking about well correlation, we have various tools to be able to sort of help us um, analyze our data. So just simply what we can do is, if we wanted to add uh, a, new, uh, a new log in a new track, we can, either, uh, we can either just toggle on or toggle off, if you like. And what that does is bring, brings uh, the, the log into the first track. And to generate a new track, I can come out of the, of the track that it's currently sat in and just drag and drop. And you can see that the gamma log is now available uh, within a new track, like so. Okay. What I can also do, that, do is color code this accordingly, for an example. 
and then give and then and then give it some sort of visual sort of aid where I can sort of see my uh, perhaps see my sand, see my shales within within the within the log as well. So what I can do is duplicate this log here, and then click on the duplication, move on to the settings like so, and come to the drawing style and click and color stick. And what it does, it takes it takes up a uh, template which I predefined already within T Navigator as well. So now I can see nicely my shales, my dark colors, my sands, which are my lighter colors, etc. Okay. So to create a predefined template, it's quite simple really. And you just come into the log itself. I can right click and come into object settings. And here I've, you can see that I've created um, a gamma template with my initials on there. But if I wanted to generate a brand new template, I can come in here, open up the templates list, and we have a, a variety of default templates here in this list. Okay. So what I can do to create a new one, I can just simply click add and generate a new template. And maybe I'll call it gamma, uh, gamma two. Specify if it's continuous, or obviously if I'm creating a fascist log, discrete, and go to palette. And then here, if I do a right click, I can start to edit. I have various parameters to start editing this palette. Okay, so maybe I want to change it to a different color, change color like so, or maybe I want to give it a predefined um, palette I've already, I've already um, give it. Okay, and I can start to edit these colors, so squashing and squeezing uh, the, the color to, uh, to whatever um, I would like to customize. Um, the color bar too. Okay, so I've done the same for um, for my fascist logs as well. So for an example here, I have a fascist log which I've created, and you can um, assign it again just by going into uh, the fascist log that I've either imported. So I'll go to object settings here again, go to template, and if I go to uh, this is one I created earlier, my fascist. I've specified it as a discrete template. Go to palette, and I've given the the relative codes and names and colors accordingly. Okay. So what you can do also in, in, uh, in the logs, you can create, you, so we can create fascist logs as well, quite easily as well. So what we can do here is go create, and I can name that uh, litho if I wanted to create a new fascist log. And if I right click and press the hammer tool again and go to log calculations or calculator, I can come in here and I have all the relative functions and, and buttons here to basically run a, a statement. So if it's an if statement you want to run on, so for an example, if your porosity or gamma or both are within a certain range, you can you can specify a cutoff uh, to then uh, help you interpret your your sands, your shales, or your um, your fluvial uh, or or your um, uh, fascist parameters um, that you want to specify. Once you've created, you just give it your predefined template, and then it should be able to. Uh, Give you your fascist log as you uh, as you specify. Okay. So other tools um, which we have available as well, we can edit our logs as well. So here, for an example, we have various tools for the well section window. So I can come in here. I can specify how I want to start to edit my log. Uh, so if I want to edit some sands, I just give it the right code, and I can come in here and I can draw. I can draw around. So I have to zoom in to a particular section. Okay. I can click on paintbrush and start to paint maybe some sands in these locations if I wish, uh, some shells if I want to, etc. etc. Okay. Good. With regards to well tops as well, I can visualize well tops or well markers, come to markers, and then I can visualize maybe my a particular zone I want to visualize. So this is uh, between a certain uh, uh, between a certain package that I want to visualize and I can also right click on the marker and align by markers to help me run my interpretation okay I can also use a ghost curve if I wish to highlight a certain part of the log and run across and start to analyze and it takes in the well tops as well start to analyze uh, my wells accordingly as well okay so if it's well tops that we've started, um, with regards to well tops as well, what I wanted to mention is editing those well tops. We, we also have a tool here. So if you wanted to edit a well marker, if I come up here and I wanted to edit my top of my, my, uh, my, my formation, I can come in here, just highlight the marker and just 
and move up and down accordingly across across my correlation like so I can easily create a brand new one so if it's a new SAM package I want to analyze or a baffle or something like that um, I can do so by just right clicking creating a new one I can come in here I can click on I can click on top of it it'll it'll drop down into my template if I highlight it within my template make sure I've got the edited marking marker button and I can start to pick on various sands in this case uh, and start to make my interpretation like so cool there may be a way a way that you want to sort of QC that information so for an example if you want to create sort of a thickness map between one and the other and uh, you can quite easily do that within this as a sort of QC and uh, to make sure you haven't had a miss pick up the well top or just to see the thickness between um, a top and a base okay so to do that what we can do is come into um, well attributes like so using this hammer tool we can open the calculator up here i've already got the statement in place but what what we can do is if i if i am um, if i come away from the statement i can come down here to the markers and i can basically go um, one marker minus the other <clears throat> Okay, press apply, and this will generate uh, an attribute essentially, um, which is lo located under my attributes pane. And within a 2D window, <coughs> I'll just open a brand new one. I've already got some, some maps uh, displayed, but I'll take off the various, um, the various information I have. Okay, so I can display the, the, the well and the, the, the attribute I've generated. So the, gener so the thickness across my, each of my, my locations or my markers I have. And then to take that a little step further, I might, I might want to just quickly grid that up. So to do that, all I need to do is come into the 2D maps. Okay, create new, come into here, thickness, press OK. Uh, thickness one press ok and I can come into the hammer tool and I can come into the interpolation choose the attribute which is thickness specify any filters I have available or uh, polygons I want to cut to perhaps detect um, some kind of geometry using a horizon perhaps I already have within a, within my um, uh, project you can specify the grid increments you can auto detect that to generate the uh, general uh, geometry and you press apply. And once you press apply, you should generate some sort of thickness map utilizing the attributes that I've just created for my well section. And then if I want to make that uh, a little bit more visual, I can come into the 2D maps, go to thickness, go to contours, and then show the contours across, um, across my window. So I can sort of quickly QC the thickness across my, uh, across my correlation which I've uh, which I've just uh, generated okay also to take this a little bit step further maybe to help in the property modeling in the well in the well section window and uh, what I might have here is a is a is a is a, or what I want to find out certainly is the is the thickness of sand packages or the fraction of of sand that's in within the formation maybe you want to drive uh, property modeling uh, or create some sort of um, uh, probability map um, across your formation to help you drive the interpolation of sand and shales use, using some sort of uh, fraction uh, to, uh, to, to enable. So, so for an example, if I want to calculate the fraction of sand within this formation, what I can do is come into my well attributes again, open up this hammer tool, okay, Cut, use a tool called average log between markers, give it some sort of name, um, I'm going to use the shale fraction <clears throat> and specify the log, specify between which formation, so between which marker and which marker. Um, maybe I want to use a well filter, specify the actual um, log type, whether it's discrete or, uh, or uh, continuous, uh, but that's usually picked up automatically from the log you specified. And then the averaging method. So we have a various, uh, we have various methodologies to calculating uh, 
the number of something between a formation. So the minimum, maximum, fraction, percentage, thickness of a package maybe. So in this case, what, um, what I want to do is calculate the fraction, give it the fascist code. So in my case, fascist code of shale is zero. And then I can press apply, okay? So once I press apply, again, in a 2D window, what I can do, I'll just untoggle um, this by right click and hide. Uh, I can I can visualize this, my shale fraction, okay? So here, uh, I'm gonna take off the well names and you can see the fraction of shale distributed um, across uh, my wells there. So 0%, um, 0 0.62% uh, of shale. And I could do exactly the same for sand as well, okay? And I can, and then obviously like before, like just creating the thickness map, I can come into um, um, the 2D maps and generate some sort of, uh, I guess, fraction map and to then be able to perhaps input later on in my property modeling to, uh, to interpolate my sands or my shales across, um, across my grid, okay? Cool. So that's really a 2D, that's really well correlation, uh, importing some visualizations there. Um, something I've not really mentioned is like cross sections as well, and which, but I'll show you how to do that um, later on and really, really quickly. Um, what we can do uh, as well is specify histograms so we can see the distribution of a, of a particular log uh, or property that we have available within the pro uh, project as well. All we need to do is come in, go to logs and click on uh, porosity and see the distribution of pros uh, porosity in this case, okay. Cross plots, we can do the same. We can specify the X, the Y, give it some sort of color. And here I've got my permeability and my porosity distributed in a, in a, in a cross plot with a sort of linear trend. So I can see the, uh, so I can see the data spread and we'll see if I've got any sort of good correlation or coefficient uh, between one day to another. Uh, maybe I want to utilize that within the property modeling as well. Okay. All right, so moving on from here, um, I just want to mention or talk about really, um, once we're happy with our interpretation, just building really fast and structural models, whether that's a real sort of simple grid method where we can just build sort of sugar cube models between a top, a middle and a base perhaps, or top and bottom reservoir specifying the, uh, the, um, uh, the I guess the, the layering and the horizontal resolution of the model as well, or we can sort of, build more complex models by incorporating faults, uh, whether that's unstructured or structured, okay? So in this example here, what I will show you, I'm just gonna dip into uh, a project that, which I have uh, currently. Uh, which is a project here, um, just with some faults and uh, I guess like a, uh, a closure with a, with a major fault sort of um, coming into um, coming into play here okay so what I want to do is just basically show you quickly how T navigator can handle structural modeling uh, or how we can do it essentially and um, something I'm not I've not sort of gone into as well we have a um, obviously the palettes that we can visualize in every single sort of uh, well 2d and 3d window and so what's quite nice is that the palettes are actually quite interactive. So if you want to sort of highlight a potential contact or, uh, or sort of values on the whatever sort of map you've sort of displaying, you can do that by just interactively, uh, um, I guess, moving the, uh, the, the palette accordingly uh, to, um, to whatever you want to try and highlight. I can right click and uh, remove the filter if I wish as well. And so I found that quite nice uh, within Team Navigator. Uh, but essentially, moving on to the modeling, what I can do, I'm just going to put this as, an, as a display, and you probably notice that I can actually change my displays across the wind, uh, across uh, however I want to. So I can actually this actually becomes mobile. I can actually display um, multiple windows in multiple sections, uh, which is quite good. Okay, so I'm going to move these settings here. So with regards to modeling, um, we do have various parameters which can help us. So for an example. Uh, the modeling is actually done by uh, utilizing this, again, this hammer tool. 
And at the bottom, we have something called static model. And you can see here, I already have parameters already predefined. But on the left here, we have various ways of creating a model. We can create a, a model uh, by, gr uh, by gridding just horizons. So that's our simple sugar cube model where we just want to input horizons, no, no, no faults or anything, just, just input our, uh, yeah, our maybe top and base horizon, specifying uh, the number of layers, the resolution, the grid, etc. We can also grid by points. So if we have multiple multi Z uh, that we want to model, um, we need to do that by points and also include some faults in there as well. And also the one I'm going to show you now, which is grid by horizons and faults as well. So here for an example, um, I'm clicked on grid by horizons and faults, and I can come in here. I've got various um, horizons, which I have. Uh, I've just got one horizon displayed and some faults displayed here. And so what I can do, I can come in here, I can open up the horizon, specify which horizon I want to model, incorporate as many horizons as I wish, specify the zone. I can also rename the zone if I wish, and also the count or step. The count and step is basically the layering. Uh, I'm just going to keep it default uh, for 10 layers for each one, and also the partition type, so how I want the layering to be modeled. If it's, if it, is it along the bottom or along the top, um, or, is it proportion, uh, or is it proportional, essentially? And then finally, the horizon type, whether the, whether the horizon that I'm modeling is conformable, is it, a base, is it a basement, discontinuous, is it an unconformity or an erosional layer, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so then once, I've done, once I'm happy with this section, I can then move on to the faults as well. So all the faults I have within my project are automatically updated within here. So you don't need to include or drop in, drop in faults. They're all, they're by default, they're all included within the modeling. But if you don't want to incorporate all the faults, you can easily just come in here and click off or click on use and depending on uh, what you want to model. I can also specify if I want to model structured or unstructured, uh, unstructured being sort of stair stepped, and also the distance uh, or extrapolation distance away from the fault as well. So then moving to the bottom here, we've got here the, if we want to output some properties, so if it's a segmented property, so where you have, um, uh, perhaps faults cutting across your model and you want to you want to incorporate or create some sort of property that shows the segment you can you can do that and you can also cut the grid by a polygon if you have a polygon in the project you can cut the grid by a specified uh, boundary if you wish and then you can you can also define a geometry as well by some sort of horizon that you already have within your project and specify the horizontal resolution whether that's 100 by 100 50 by 50 etc once you click auto detect and apply uh, in one sort of, uh, I guess, in one sort of process, uh, the model will just generate. Okay. Um, so just by, um, just by, uh, I guess, um, uh, modeling parameters, like when we're modeling, obviously these horizons need to be clean, the faults need to be clean, and so we do have various um, parameters that can help us clean up horizons, so we don't, uh, so we can generate a nice, I guess, orthogonal and. Um, uh, and yeah, nice orthogonal models, okay? So, so for an example, what we can do here, uh, if I come away just for now, this is a, uh, a horizon which I got here. And if it's a, a particular area of the fault that I want to fix up, I can come in here, I can click on the tools, which is a, a editing tool like horizon, and I can specify the, the radius of this horizon. I can sort of shrink this if I wish, like so. And I can start to pull down or pull up the horizon if I wish around the fault if I want. Uh, I found this quite neat. I don't want to do it too much as well. But anyway, I can, and I have many undo buttons as well um, if I've made a mistake. And with regards to faults, um, we do have some editing tools as well for fault modeling. Um, just before we go into this, um, the, the actual structural model itself, and we can come in here. And we have various parameters that help us control the, the I guess, the, the faults that we have within our, in our, editing the faults that we have within our project. Uh, I'm just clicking on one fault, but if I was click on all the faults, you can see that these are all the faults I'm trying to model. So I'm just going to, again, just highlight one particular fault. And just as a demonstration, I can come in here, I can click on the fault or click on a, or, uh, click on a stick, and I can, I can move sort of this ball up and down, left to right. This is completely arbitrary, but I can move it along the stick and just try and edit the fault, making it sort of clean and orthogonal and ready for modeling. Okay. 
But once I've done all my edits, essentially what I can do, I can come back into the process. Okay. Come into the static modeling, open up the hammer tool. Once I'm happy, drop in the, again, drop in the horizon if I made any edits, we drop, uh, and then obviously the fault will automatically be picked up. Press apply. And once I've applied, um, I will generate some sort of grid. Okay. So then the grid will be created um, at the moment uh, in the settings I'm displaying uh, in the grid and the grid lines. I can, I can undisplay those if I wish. I can display the framework only so I can actually come into the, into the grid and understand the, the framework if I wish, et cetera. What I can also do as well is generate some properties. Okay, so for an example, if I want to uh, understand the layering uh, I can generate in the, in, the, in the hammer tool as well. I can create a new property and whether that's a zone, zone property, um, like so. So once I've created a property by zone, I can come out of here and I can see the zones that I've modeled nicely. And I can come and toggle those off to QC those if I've modeled each zone correctly, etc. cetera. Um, in the calculator for the property, I can just specify K layer. If I press OK, press apply, I do get the op the the operations to run as uh, and, you know to create properties here. So in the geometry, all the functions or operations, I have all the all the available parameters to generate um, various properties. So if it's um, if it's property that you want to start to edit and create. Um, new porosity uh, properties or water saturation J functions you can do that in here by using a property calculator but I've just generated a K property uh, which showcases um, each layer uh, as a property I'm just going to display um, the grid lines as, as, as so okay so also to QC this I can generate things like uh, cross sections as well so I can come in here in the tools again on the right hand side, click on the cross section. Again, I can make a cross section by, by selection of points by using well to well or just a simple vertical cross section. This automatically comes on and I can sort of edit this or move this around uh, as I wish. If I close this down and come into cross section, you can see that my cross section automatically is picked up, okay? And then if I was to visualize this in a 3D window as well, and I'll just click on the cross section. Okay. Generate a new one. I'm just gonna generate a new one here. Okay. Uh, show on the property. My computer is uh, catching up on me because I'm too fast for it. But uh, but yeah, okay, it's too it's scrolling on. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, what you can do is like like I said, you can display the layering on the zones, and you can sort of move these uh, this cross section interactively, and it should um, work its way through the property, showcasing basically uh, your cells, your geo cells. Whether you you need to make any fi uh, you need to fix any any parts of the model itself, etc. Okay. Um, so moving on, um, hoping that to uh, to catch up as well. Um, but essentially, what we can do now is uh, just quickly display some perhaps uh, filters. Uh, I've showed you um, some um, some zone filters which we could use. But if I go to grid. Here and go to the static model. Uh, we can specify IJK filter as well. Um, so if I go here, I go into section, 
and specify 10. You can see I can I can come in and QC my grid accordingly in the X direction. I can also do it for the Y direction and I can also do it in the Z, so for each layer of my grid as well. So just with the with just just with the purpose of time, I'm going to sort of move on uh, to basically now um, bring in those petrol physical parameters into the grid. Okay, so I'm going to jump uh, back into um, my first project which I had open. Okay, so this is basically here uh, a simple uh, a simple uh, grid from between top and base with some very sort of pseudo faults which I've generated, um, which I've got some segments uh, to it. Uh, and so what I want to do is basically bring in, if I basically hide the grid, <coughs> take off the logs and display my fascist log, like so. I want to start to bring in my fascist log and my perhaps my porosity log and any other logs into the grid. So obviously the, that the step for that is is upscaling or blocking the logs into the grid. And to do that is relatively straightforward. Okay, so we go back to the static model. Okay, and we can come into the hammer tool, and what we can do is generate a new what they call block logs or upscale log. I can name that fascist or porosity upscaled if I wish. Um, I already have one uh, created uh, just for example purposes. And um, but what I've done is specified fascist upscaled, uh, generated uh, or, or brought in the log, which is the litho log, uh, specified the averaging type uh, and how I wanted to treat the logs, and pressed apply. Okay, so it's simply then um, the logs are then brought into the the project, um, which I can see um, quite nicely here. Okay, and I know, and then in a well section window, I can QC that as well. So here I've got my porosity log, my lithology log, and if I were to click on my blocked log as well for my fascies, uh, you can see that my fascies log has dropped into the first track. I can bring it into the second, uh, to the to a separate track. Okay, I can right click, come into the settings, show as color stick, and you can see if I've hit the heterogeneity or the detail I want to hit. So, so if I wanted to sort of update that or capture more sand. So for example, I wanted to capture this sand a little bit more. Obviously, I then would have to go back to the static model, redefine the layering type, and then rerun the block log. So but but this is just a real sort of how we, uh, real sort of fast way of how we can sort of QC the QC or upscaled parameters there. Again, we can come into the histogram. Um, I can, I've, at the moment, I've just got my porosity log, which I looked up before in the diagram. But what I can do is I can display my litho log. <clears throat> okay, with the log here, with my block log here, and then see if I've again captured enough detail I wanted to capture. Okay, so again, what I can do, um, I can do exactly the same for my uh, for my porosity uh, log as well. So, for an example, uh, go back into the hammer tool, go back to the block logs. Uh, create new poro, but again for time purposes, I've already I've already done it. Um, but again, I can specify the the uh, the log I want to uh, to upscale, the averaging type, whether that's arithmetic usually for porosity, um, and also um, what how I want to treat the log. And we also have the functionality to use bias. So if I want to bias my fascist towards various parameters within the porosity uh, distribution. Okay, so now I can press apply. And then my, I'll get my upscale logs. Okay. And again, like I mentioned before, you can then display your porosity and see if you've captured use uh, the, the heterogeneity of or distribution you've you've wanting to capture within within the log property. Okay. So then, how do how do we then uh, interpolate that across the grid? Okay. So I know this is a real sort of quick look into sort of upscaling property modeling, but I just wanted to show you the functionality that that we have available. And so what I want to do is first distribute my fascies, my fascies, uh, or my fasc yeah, my my fascies uh, interpretation. So so to do that, we can come back into this hammer tool. So this hammer tool is kind of like my best my best friend when it comes to uh, geology designer. And um, I've usually got it floating on another another screen all the time. And I can come into properties, okay, and I can click on fascies analysis, okay. And then I can I can actually either generate a new property. So by default, it's going to call it property two or just fascist property. Um, because I've already done it before. And what I'm going to do is just highlight and show you the parameters which I used. 
Um, again, what I can do um, in the fascist analysis, I can specify the, the, the algorithm I want to choose. So we have our classic Kriging and SGS me methods, so our deterministic and stochastic methods. Um, and then also then once I've specified that, I can also specify um, the, uh, the space type, which is obviously modeling IJK or XYZ, IJK by default. Uh, and then uh, what I want to populate, if I want to populate my shale, my silt and my sands, which I have available. And then for each fascist type, and then I have to give it some sort of distribution. So when I, for my shale um, here, I can, this is where I can give it the, the, I, I say trend map, like a probability map, like my shale fraction, which I created before, perhaps. I'm just going to toggle that off for now. My silt uh, and my sand. Okay, it's going to toggle these off for now. And the fascist fraction, whether I want to take in my upscale logs, if I want to take in my actual well log, or if I want to manually give it some sort of, uh, um, I guess, um, distribution there. And then obviously varigram. So varigram is uh, is important when it comes to um, the method we want to use. Um, so for varigram analysis, just quickly, what we can do is um, in a we have a, a specified tab for that called others. And if I come to the others tab, I can I can hold as many many different varigrams as I want. So obviously for each fascist, you might want a different varigram. And also we can model varigrams in different ways. So like so for an example, again using this hammer tool, uh, I can come here cr uh, create uh, actually away from this i can create new varigram if i want okay and call it say sand <clears throat> okay um, but just for time purposes um what i'm going to do is show you how um how which 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 methods we, we have available so really it's isotropic or anisotropic and so an isotropic here, so for porosity i've used an isotropic method where we can just create one one variogram for uh, for uh, for uh, for particular distribution, and I can have I have full utilization of fitting a, a variogram model to to my data. Or what's quite nice, for an example, with my in my fascies, I've I generated an isotropic where I can actually model my vertical, uh, my major, my minor direction, and separately, and I can also change the orientation or the azimuth of how I want to model that variogram, and you can see that nicely in it. Uh, quite interactively and that's a that's a real sort of plus factor I, I really quite like that personally so then moving back to the modeling I can come back to the geometry objects okay and then obviously I've already created a fascist model but what I want to show you here is for each uh, fascist I can specify the variogram I want to uh, we want to utilize <coughs> uh, just for time just for this purposes I'm just using the same variogram <coughs> okay and I can press apply, um, and then it, and then generate um, a model. And this is used, this is uh, actually a pixelated uh, SGS model which I created earlier. Um, but what I'm going to do is just quickly create a porosity. So it'll generate a blank property at the moment, and then I can come into the hammer tool and come into away from fascist analysis and come into interpolation. Click on an interpolation method. I'm just going to use Kriging for now. Okay, and then I can pick on the log, which is the porosity log, the blocked log. Click on the variogram. Uh, click on porosity. Uh, I can click on the Kriging type and specify global mean if I wish and just press apply. And then uh, I have sort of a Kriging result here. Okay, so uh, it is a Kriging result, but what I can do is also is um, I can uh, filter on a particular fascist type. So I know my sans are uh, fascist code two. And press apply. So you can see uh, just for Kriging purposes, I can distribute my high porosity values in the sand. Uh, and then I can take that further and use an SGS method if I wish. Again, using the same variogram and just press apply. And it's more of a pixelated, I guess, formation there. Okay, so that's really qu quickly the, the distribution or interpolation methods that we sort of have and can do within the NT Navigator. And obviously, again, for QC purposes, we have the various histograms which, which we can use. Uh, so we can look at the distribution of the porosity, uh, and, um, you know, blocked versus um, properties, whether we have to go back to the, uh, in the grid and specify uh, um, um, more layering if we wish, or et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so, so, that's, um, so that's really populating um, um, or interpolating our properties. Okay. Um, so coming back to actually basically the presentation now, um, 
what I'm going to do is just dip into the presentation. Okay, so I basically ran through here all the data preparation, model building, some property modeling parameters, quickly how we can sort of QC that through the histograms and cross plots. I haven't mentioned volume calculation, but we do have a whole, we do have a volume, ca volume calculation um, uh, process available, which is a basically, again, uh, utilizing all the properties that we've created. You just input all the parameters. And uh, so your so your contacts and your gross rock volume, the porosity, water saturations, if you've got them, um, you can run all those um, all of those properties and basically does a simple multiplication and you can output those as as maybe a, a volume like a, for an example here, I've got a stoip volume property uh, here, uh, and also you can report that as tables. So you can you can report out the pore volume, hydrocarbon pore volume, uh, geometrical volume if you wish, and also the final stoic volume as well for uh, for reporting purposes. And we do have a functionality for that um, to incorporate, and you can sort of filter on segments, you can filter on fasces as well, um, which is quite handy. Okay. And then the final thing really is automating this. So everything I've just sort of described as well, we have a process here called record actions and user workflow. And so what that does is all the steps I've created will automatically pick up within the workflow area here, where you can uh, where you where it, where you can specify uh, the correlations you use, the horizons you've you've interpreted, the calculating properties, the variograms you use, the property interpolations. So all the all the basically the steps I've just generated or, or utilized uh, will be recorded in a workflow, and you can sort of which enables you to then actually uh, either run automated uh, model updates or automated. Um, updates on various features that you want to perhaps create within uh, within uh, within your project or you can take this further and generate uh, multiple realizations of the model and actually um, enable variables and create sort of capture the uncertainty and this is really where you can go from the static world and capture capture various um, uncertainty parameters and take that to more more towards the dynamic uh, side of things i guess okay so yeah that in a nutshell is is me with regards to um, looking at the geology designer. Um, there are the features, I, that was really sort of fast, witty, um, sort of um, user experience sort of experience. But I, I guess, uh, if, again, if you do have any any questions, um, I am, we've sort of, we've got some time now to answer some questions. Uh, I will be at the EAG, so please come along to our stand and I will be there standing around, so uh, ask, more questions to me then or my email is at the bottom there so you can record that email and just directly contact me at, at any point and i will get back to you with um, um pretty much straight away with with an answer um and if there's anything else that you want we want me to maybe come into you to see or you want to to see you about something particular i'm happy to do that as well okay thanks joe okay thank you very much tom um obviously as tom said that was quite a a lot of information in the hour so if you do have any questions please do get in touch with us and um, we've got a couple of questions just coming in here and um, so is it possible to model different boolean shapes i.e sheets channels etc in the properties okay so with regards to shapes um, i know maybe that you're referring to object modeling there uh, object modeling we don't have available but you but i know that the hier hierarchical modeling is being incorporated in next release 18.2 um i've already um uh, that's already been in, in, in the pipeline for, for for last year, but now I know for sure it's coming in the next release. I've already speaking, spoken to developers about that. Uh, yeah, okay, so we've got a question here about um, multiple realizations. Can I elaborate parameters? So yeah, so I... So what we can do is we have a we have a we do have a workflow uh, within T Navigator, which I which I didn't open up. But what we do is like a, like an uncertainty analysis. What we we can sort of specify variables, whether that's um, putting a variable to a, to a variogram analysis distribution, uh, if it's putting a variable to the structural uncertainty of your seismic interpretation, we we can incorporate that in the workflow and essentially run uh, maybe a 10, 20, 100 times uh, and generate multiple models uh, or multiple realizations of the same model. Um, uh, yeah, and then perhaps look at the, the 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 volumetrics or the utilizing tornado plots or sensitivity analysis. That's a whole new module altogether. Uh, but yeah, that's what I mean by uh, by uh, multiple realizations, specifying variables where we have where you're uh, uncertain about a particular, uh, I guess, feature, and then you can uh, create multiple models of the same thing. 
so another question here, do you have an uncertainty analysis tool? Uh, we do have an uncertainty analysis type tool. Um, that's more the dynamic side of things. Um, but if you want to know more about that, uh, there is a whole uh, big topic and uh, a new, I mean, like it, that's coming more towards into the dynamic um, sense side of things. But yeah, uh, we do have an uncertainty analysis type tool, which you can use and again, use, use our workflow, specify the variables and generate multiple, I guess, multiple realizations of the model. Okay. So there's a lot of questions coming in. I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do is, um, is some, just quickly summarize some of these questions, but then also get back to you if I can't answer them all. What, what we'll do, sorry to interrupt you, Tom. Um, we, since we've got quite a lot of questions coming in, we'll take them away and answer them and we'll send, send out to everyone after um, all the questions and answers we've received. Um, so if you don't get it answered now, we will certainly answer it later on. Okay. So we'll do one more. Uh, do you have a search analysis? Uh, yeah, I'll that one. Okay, is TNAV developing training image based methods? Uh, so I know that uh, you're probably talking about uh, multi point statistics there. Um, again, uh, we don't have it in the current, but it's it's definitely in development now. And um, we're bringing in um, a, a multi, uh, yeah, we're bringing in training image type um, algorithms to T Navigator. It's very new um, at the moment, but it's coming, it's coming here. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there are some a lot of questions here, but I'm going to just summarise them up on a separate separate sheet, separate email. Uh, please contact me directly uh, if it's uh, if it's a question you have. I know there's a I know we're short on time at the moment, but yeah. Um, okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much to Tom for the presentation, and thank you everyone for joining us. Um, as Tom said, we'll be at EAGE next week, so we are stand five two two. So please do come along if you're there. Um, and see us for a demonstration or a try out yourself um, and we hope to see you next time thank you very much everyone